With the last update of Hunt Showdown, a small beetle was introduced into the bayou. It acts as a small drone, but is currently used by most people simply for a kamikaze attack, which is pretty pointless. Because this beetle has an incredible potential. In the right combination, we can, for example, easily kill an aftermath player with a wall bang. We can prevent situations like this, where we just get shot out of nowhere, out of some bush. It also helps us push boss rooms, it helps us flank in fights, rotate single place. That thing is insane. And today we will look at how to use this little bug properly. But first of all, we look at the basics, because everything else builds upon it. And most important, I hereby name this beetle Furby. Now some of those facts that we have here could change in the future, so if something changes, it will be in the comment section or description down below. The beetle itself can be unlocked at level 15 already and costs only $45. Meaning we could use it very very early in the game and build it into our loadout where it will help us fight the big guys at a very early stage. The range of the beetle is limited to 150 meters. If you fly outside its range, a warning will appear. If you don't fly back into the area in time, the beetle is gone. But 150 meters, that's a lot. In most cases, it's much further than the whole compound. Means you can make some plays with it, especially in combination with the fact that the bug can actually trigger mobs. It makes noise, and when you fly past the mob with it, it reacts to that noise. So let's say you're at Alice Farm. You can fly around the whole compound with the range of the bug, make noise on the other side of the compound, piss off a cage, scare up some zombies or hive, and that would make all the hunters in that compound look the wrong way. Unless, of course, they have a beetle themselves and saw you coming. Now, when you leave the flight mode, the beetle just falls on the ground. So you want to do that in the open where you can find your little Herbie in the open. You can also find Herbies on the map itself. They are in those cocoons, partly in and on houses or on the trees. On the trees, they're very easy to spot because of all that stuff spawning around it. No idea what that should be or what it's called, but you know what I mean? And you can get a total of two Herbies out of these cocoons. That means if you find one towards the end of the round, you can still take it with you to make a group photo. And as I already mentioned, the beetle makes noise. This is very important to know because it's based on the speed. The faster you fly with the beetle, the more noise you make. If you fly slower, the beetle is much quieter. You can't control the speed directly unless you keep pressing the W key and release it again. That's why you can kinda control the speed of your beetle. But if the beetle isn't moving around a lot, he's very very quiet. Especially if he doesn't move at all. means pay attention on how fast you fly around with it and how openly because it's pretty easy to shoot that thing even from a pretty impressive distance because the hitbox is pretty big. If the beetle is shot you lose it otherwise and the inventory slot is also free now. So for example you could also use the scout, drop it somewhere, pick up another item, use that item, go pick up the beetle again. Lastly, you can actually let Herbie explode. It creates a small explosion in the radius which blows up lanterns, barrels and so on. It also hurts hunters, but only a little bit. But it poisons them and makes them bleed. Alright, those are the basics. But how do we use the beetle now? The most obvious way of course is the disgusting play in combination with the sparks. Because as I said before, when we let Herbie explode, the enemy hunter is poisoned and bleeds which gives us the opportunity to one shot with the sparks. This works especially well indoors where the opponent just can't look everywhere. For example, this player right here has to watch these stairs because my teammate is up there. So if he turns around to look at the beetle, then my teammate might push him and kill him. So he has to stay focused on these stairs. So he eats the explosion and well, it had to end the way it did. Now, of course, this can also be done in the open, but to be honest, this play is more for memes and everything else. Because it just takes too long to send off the bug, fly there, hope he won't be noticed, hope that the hunter is still, well, injured. 
That's just enough. A flashbang would be way better. But if it works out, it's hilarious. A completely different example of how to use the beetle for offense would be, for example, to push a compound. If we know that the enemy are in there and already have banished the boss, for example, then we can use the beetle to go in and don't just let it explode right away. We want to gather information. We want to know what weapons do they have. In this case, they have a Vetroli and a Romero, meaning the Romero could be dangerous in close spaces. So we want to force him out of there to fight on a long range. And that kind of information is incredibly valuable. For example, if there were two aftermath players, you may be reconsidered or attack from a different angle. If you see two shotguns, for example, as well. It gives you so much information. In our case, we just wanted to push the Romero out, take the room. So that's what we did. Let the bug explode, burn explosives. And there we go. We took the boss room. Now that goes to an absolutely new level. When you use that as a team, for example, here with the wall bang on an aftermath player. This player sits there in a the corner and hopes he won't be noticed. The beetle ruins that plan. I can tell my teammate with pings to wall bang through the boxes. That's what he does and there you go. Now this is incredibly strong, but you have to keep one thing in mind. Only use the beetle when the situation allows it. Meaning only when the fight is at a standstill. And both teams are in a sort of trend situation and not moving. You definitely don't want to pull the beetle when the other team is pushing or generally moving. Because when you're sitting inside the beetle, you're not supporting your team. Because a ping is nice, but if your teammate has to fight 2v1, a ping won't help him that much. Also, only use the beetle when there aren't any mobs nearby, because if you get hit, Irby falls to the ground. And that was the offensive variant, but now to the more important in my eyes, and that is Intel. Especially for somebody like me who often plays solo, an absolute blessing. Now when I've banished the boss, what do I do? Aside from run into barbed wire, <laughs> I have to try to figure out where people are coming from. So far I've only been able to do that while looking outside the window or listening. And when that went badly, I had the first tab right away, because it's pretty easy to kill somebody looking out the stationary window. With the beetle now, I can give him that task. That means we put it above the compound somewhere and scan the area. And I immediately see when another team is approaching my layer. This allows us now again to use crosshair placement that we looked at in another video and gives us an extremely fair fight and a very good chance of getting out alive. We prepare our crosshair and then ideally we hit the shot. With that, we have already taken out one player. Now we can send the beetle right back up and check what he is doing. Does he go for the res? Does he retreat? What kind of weapon does he have? This will all influence how he plays and in return, how we play. Basically, the beetle is like a light version of the boost, which is connected with some disadvantages, of course, because we have to be careful. Just remember that you are defenseless when you're inside the beetle and it can easily be shot away. So be careful which route you fly and how fast you fly and always bring it back if you want to use it more often. Otherwise, it will fall to the ground. Maybe at a location where you don't want to pick it up. But this intel part can be used pretty much everywhere, especially in team fights. Let's say a trio. If we have a fight and we don't notice the other team is rotating, this will end pretty badly for our team member that is now in a 1v3 situation. With the beetle, we can notice exactly that and reposition ourselves as well. And again, we see what weapons they are playing. So for example, if one has a sniper, we know that player is probably not engaging in close range fights. So we have to look out for a sniper somewhere far away. So all those informations are incredibly crucial in a fight. And it's always a trade-off. You have to consider, is it worth it to send off the bug right away? Because yeah, you're tied to it for a while and then it has to come back if you want to pick it up again. This means really you are out of the fight for some time. So again, be careful when you use it, but when you do, it allows you to play with a ton of information. It's almost like playing Room Total War. You can reposition and won't be surprised that fast. And that, in my eyes, is where the beetle seems incredibly strong. You no longer have to check with your face. You have another way to gather information. Other than that, you can do beetle dances. You can greet teammates. You can take group photos. Now, of course, we are still in the beginning of the beetle. There will be a lot of changes for sure. 
people will discover new ways to use it. But there you have the basics to how to beetle. And it's incredibly powerful. If you found this video helpful, as always, please smash a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you want to support it even more, consider becoming a channel member to help cover the expenses for the whole video editing process. Or if you have a Twitch Prime available, it's another way to support. Although the Twitch channel is in German. Thanks a ton and see you all in the next video. Take care.